Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Resident Arcade. It is Wednesday night, and we are live. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, as you can see, we don't have Sam with us today. We have Steve on, on the internet from 1982. Yes, he's he's on his uh, archaic connection, um, connected by what what did what did you say before? Protons or something? You're the you're uh, a scientist in the in the. No, this is bits of string. Bits of string. Is <laughs> that bits of string with ones and zeros written on them and thrown? Yeah. <laughs> so we just bundle them up in a ball, stuff them in an envelope, stick a first class stamp on, put it in the post box, and wait for, like wait for three days, and you get your the packet sent reply. Um, I'm also having camera issues, so every now and again my computer freezes and my, my keyboard flips upside down and explodes and I kind of go... So, yeah, sorry if anything <laughs> bad goes on today. We should uh, we should be in a better position next week, hopefully. Anything bad in the show, not in general. We can't be held responsible for other people's actions. No, we can't, we can't. That's and, true, uh, yeah. We don't have Sam, Sam's... <sighs> Sam's laptop's not working. I'm in a mood Sam today as well. So. Stamp. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a mood today as well, so I, I apologise if I shout at anybody or inadvertently ban someone for saying hello in the channel. Um, but this yes, is why we're <laughs> late, by the way. We had to listen to him pissing in the morning before the show. That as well, and I'm getting a cold out of everything. I'm 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 getting man flu. So and I'm, I'm <laughs> you know why I'm I'm especially pissed off about getting a cold. I'm I'm really annoyed because I woke up this morning with a bit of a sore throat. I'm sorry, a bit of a headache and a sore throat's been developing throughout the day. Yeah, I'm I got that a few days ago. I'm a little bit annoyed about it. No, 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 I'm not, not even a little bit. I'm very annoyed about it because we're doing Ludham Dare this weekend and I was, I've was i been looking forward to doing Ludham Dare. I'm looking forward to having Lou over and rearranging the room and spending the entire weekend proper geeking it up, making a game. We've got loads of cool ideas for it and I'm going to be sniffing and snorting like a bloody leper all weekend. Can't even <laughs> speak today. As long as limbs don't <laughs> fall off, Chris, I think we'll be fine with this. Yeah, well, we'll see. I said I'm just going to drug myself up. I'll, uh, I'll get the heroin out and... Put oh, myself full um, of it. That reminds me of something completely unrelated to the show, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. Go on. Uh, Lou, I've got a sweet for you, and it's the sourest thing you'll ever taste in your life. Okay. Okay. Just offer the diabetic sweets. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, hello everybody in chat, and uh, I said this this show, if you haven't seen it before, is a talk show about games, game development, gaming news, what we've played game wise, anything that's uh, caught our eye. As those of you who are regular viewers will know, we do swear a little bit on this show, and on top of that, um, we are a bit rubbish at playing games. So this week, Sam had played plenty of games, but Sam's having technical problems. I have played one or two games, and uh, everyone else has pretty much played nothing. So I played a bit of GTA Five. Oh, oh, you have played a bit. Was it actually? I thought. Has it actually been released? Yeah, it came out, yeah, yeah, came out yesterday. yesterday. Oh, I'm going to have to get it then. Sorry, I, I when we were talking prior to the show, I, I assumed that it, it was still preloading because um, you no, could no, get it preloaded, um, couldn't you? Yeah, it came out yesterday morning, I think. So yeah, I played about an hour's worth of it. Okay, cool. Well, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, in fact, now, why not? Let's move on. Let's, let's move do on it to now. Let's yeah, do it now. Let's do it now. Fuck it. Come Steve. on then. Yeah. You've, you've played it on consoles as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so I can give um, give a good comparison. So before first before thing, Lou gets too f spuffy about whatever he wants to ask you about, you tell us about it. Uh, well, the first thing that struck me was that it's a little bit buggy. Uh, I instantly went in to remap my keys, thinking there's a lot of keys you need to use here, so I want to get this all set right. And as soon as I started mapping them, the icons for all the keys disappeared, and I couldn't map anything. Mm. And I was stuck in the game, because I couldn't press escape to get to the menu. So I had to control or delete and close it. One reboot and restart of Steam later, I managed to actually get in and reconfigure my keys. Um, can, I just ask, can I just ask, if there's any developers watching, which I'm sure there aren't, what is the problem with control remapping lately? It's not hard to make a menu where you change fucking keys. I'm sorry, but it's pissing I, me off. Some games it's like getting you worse. Do it, like before you've started the game, and once you start the game, and made a save, you can't reconfigure the keys beyond that point. Why? But anyway, uh, Grand Theft Auto is not like that. You can change your keys at any time you want. Uh, the next thing I've done was I've run the Ben. Uh, there's a lot of graphics options. It's very configurable. Right. Uh, so I ran the, uh, the benchmark test just to see what was what. Uh, and that also started playing the first mission of the story in time with the benchmark. 
Right. Which <laughs> then made me fail the first mission because I couldn't actually do anything. <laughs> uh, and then I lost all my uh, my key mappings again. So I re <laughs> again. Um, restarted Steam again. <laughs> this is about 10 o'clock last night. Um, ran the game with the default graphic settings, set to obviously like the resolution up and stuff, uh, and played the game straight off then. It plays very well, it looks beautiful, it's smooth. Yeah, it does, okay, screenshots of it, it looked unbelievably good. Yeah, it does look fantastic. Um, the control mechanism, um, I've opted for mouse and keyboard on everything barring vehicles and vehicles using the uh, gamepad. Because I just can't get away with using mouse and keyboard with vehicles on that. Game. I think I'm it's probably going to be with you there. I think I, I don't think I, I like I like the analog, you know, control. It's one of these things where you you use uh, your left and right button on the keyboard to steer, but the camera is independent of the vehicle's trajectory. So if you turn right, then the vehicle basically swerves off to the right of your screen, and you're still facing the way you were originally. Right. Okay. Which is it's it's a bit awkward when you're doing racing. So I've switched that over. Uh, the first person works very well, although this is what I wanted to ask. it doesn't feel right. Oh no! There's something wrong with that. Now, I've kind of switched um, to, like, to playing in a way where I only use first person when I go into buildings and I need a uh, like, precision aim. Everything else I'll just leave in third person. Have you got V-Sync turned on? No, don't be <laughs> fucking stupid. <laughs> That, well, so, can, that's the first you, thing I ask if someone Windows does. Well. Can, you just, can, you, can you explain, can you be a bit more explicit about what you mean by it doesn't feel right? Or is it just like, it just doesn't feel like a first person shooter? It's nothing to do with the controls. It's solid and you can control it. The mouse is responsive. All that good stuff's fine. It's just that, for me, as, as a concept, Grand Theft Auto is third person. And maybe it just takes a bit of time. Like I said, I've only played it for an hour after all the crashes. <coughs> so maybe I just need to force myself to play in first person mode a bit more and I'll get a bit more used to it. Steve, mm. can you uh, just move your mic a little bit away from your mouth because you're doing a lot of pluffing or, or plosives. As, as plosives, as a, yeah. And sibilants. S no, just, just plosives, not or sibilants. Just plosives, yeah. You do a lot of sibilants. <laughs> um, right, so overall verdict then, Steve, and, and your opinion then? Mm. It's it's a bit early to give it too much of a judgment so far, but thumbs up. Cool. All the problems aside, which they will fix, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful game, and it's extremely fun to play. Really? See, I've complete I've completed it on the Xbox, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a great Grand Theft Auto game. Yeah. But I'm so looking forward to playing it in first person. I think being able to play that game as a first person shooter would be amazing. It seems to me, and I probably wouldn't think of it as Grand Theft Auto in the third person sense. Or well, maybe if it's not well integrated, it might not work. A lot of the blending in from the story mode happens in third person, so you see what's happening around them. Mm. You know? And you also lose that kind of extra visibility you get in third person. You can see what's happening behind you automatically without having to turn around. You can see what vehicles are on the other side of the street. Yeah. You, you do get to see a lot more when you're in third person, so well, maybe that's something to do with it. Why not just why not just get an extra two monitor or an extra one monitor loo and play in surround, and you you can solve that problem. I've got my Rift. I'm sure there'll be a, a Rift version of it coming. Yeah, yeah that'd be probably. awesome. I bet someone's already started working on it. Yeah, probably. Obviously. Imagine standing at the top of the Vinewood sign, looking around with the Oculus Rift on, and then please shoot you off the top. Because you got your nobound. <laughs> he can't nearly fell off then. <laughs> he fell on to the bed. He jumped and then nearly fell back off. Rubbish cat, sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think I said I think I'm going to get it, but I, I might wait a little bit until it goes down in price. I'm not I'm it not is, urgent uh, for it. It is a 60 gig download as well, which on my connection yeah. took like nearly two days. <laughs> they did say that it comes. It comes. The the actual purchasable non-download version is six. DVDs? I think six it was six. DVDs. Six Jesus. DVDs. Oh, yeah. DVDs. No, I'm sorry. That's, that's, that's 4.7 right. gigs per disc. Right, why are we still talking in DVDs? It's Blu ray these days. No, because no one has a Blu ray player apart from you. <laughs> I've had a Blu ray player for years, though. Steve, you have one. I've got my PS3. Yeah, but can you actually install a Blu ray game? Oh, no, no. No, neither can I. Most people do not have Blu ray players in the PCs. Really? I thought yeah. it was a fairly state. They're quite cheap these days. Optical yeah, media is a bit dead now. Why would you use it when I, I've I've got a sixty-four gigabyte USB three memory stick? 
Yeah, but I was you... thinking about this. We went from DVD to really fast connections, and it, yeah. there's not much need for. No, you're right. And to be fair, I very rarely put a CD in. I, when I play retro games, occasionally I'll install them. You know, but most mm. of the time these days, I'm like, instead of going over there to that little uh, little thing, grabbing the CDs, installing it, I'd rather pay three or four quid on GOG and get a digital download. <laughs> But it's weird how things have changed though, isn't it? It really I mean, is, because we used to be so against that. We, I remember yeah. if, even at the very beginning of, of doing this show, we, we, a lot of us were like, oh, I, di I, didn't, I don't like this. I don't like all this digital download stuff. It's, it doesn't feel like I own it, but yeah. it's so convenient, isn't it? But there was, there was, the other thing was... the strange was, things are fine, though. So I was going to say, that there was something very special about the, the PC packaging. All the games came in big boxes with manuals yeah. and stuff. Until they started coming just in the standard DVD case. I was up in the attic the other day, um, and I've got all of my old Command and Conquer and uh, Day of the Tentacle and uh, like Sam and Max um, cases. But, yeah, I've got a few here. Not many. Oh no, I've actually got the DVD cases down there. So you know the normal DVD stuff that you'd you'd get a film in or whatever. But um, yeah, I, I, in, in the attic I've got all the old big the big boxes. Can't see any. I don't know. I haven't got any down here. The strange thing for me, I've, I've I've got no problem with digital downloads on a PC. In fact, I prefer them. But when given the option to go out and buy, like buy a game for the Wii U or download it for the same price, I prefer to buy it. Any I'm with day. you there for consoles. For some reason, yeah. I prefer a disc for consoles because I'm paying. Yeah, exactly what you just said. I'm paying the same price, so why not have a disc? They start incentivizing me to download it. Give me yeah. a lot more hard drives because I think PS4. I've got 500 gig on there. Uh, fair enough, I'm not even using a fraction of that at the moment, but that's not a lot when you think about it. When I, if yeah, I started the, installing games... If the PS4 was your only console and you played a lot of games, you'd soon devour that. Yeah, easy. I mean, I've <laughs> I've got terabytes of games installed on, on this PC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Lou, you played anything? I have not played anything, um, unfortunately. It's, it's uh, horrific. It, it is, is horrific, horrific but I, what this I have been doing... I've got the worst connection in the world, and even I managed to download a 60 gigabyte game and give it an hour. It's not connection, it's just time. Just not Exactly, you've got no excuse. And, he, and he, only, he only gave it an hour because it took him so long to download it. <laughs> 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 he sat there like that for 30 hours or whatever. I do plan on, keep on playing some games um, in the coming weeks. You say, keep saying this. If I can cram that in between catch up on Game of Thrones and... And the El oh, the screw Game stuff. of Thrones, man. There's nothing more important than playing games. Don't care what you say. <laughs> Apart from making games, Chris. Yes, making games. Um, yes, so I, I, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But um, I played uh, a bit more Dungeon Keeper this week. I've actually spent a lot of this week trying to get past one particular level. Um, I think Dungeon it's Keeper like or Dungeon Keeper 2? Dungeon Keeper, the first one. Uh, the <sighs> Right, I can't remember what it's... I think it's Snuggle Down or something. It's like six, the level, level six or seven, and uh, you you start off in the bottom left corner of the map, and there's a bit of gold around there, and you you basically the, the 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 way that you win the map, and I've managed to do it now, is you have to you have to basically rush as quickly as you possibly can the infinite gem. Um, bit in the Gen centre C. of the map, yeah? yeah. Because the, the, the enemy spawns right near it, but they have they, they basically take, I don't know, maybe 10, 20 minutes in order to start digging into the gold and get into the gem seam. But you have to build up your, your army as quickly as you can to about level four or five. So you build up some bile demons and some, um, uh, some of the uh, warlocks and maybe a few demon spawn as quickly as you can. So you spend most of your gold building these up to like level four or five. Use them to get past some fairies and some uh, some barbarians that are in the way, essentially. And otherwise, you just get you just get um, rushed by by the fairies and the and the barbarians. So you you base you base just gets overtaken. By fairies. Yeah, but you, it's like there's, there's only two level four fairies, and there's maybe about four or five level five barbarians. But if you don't level your troops up, you're screwed, and that's it. You've got no money. You've got no nothing to. To do it so you've got one chance basically i'd managed to do it i got to the seam i started digging through all the, the big a big gold section of the seam and then um 
the enemy started digging just as I was about to get to where they were. So they ended up opening. We had a bit of a skirmish. I managed to beat, like, win the skirmish somehow. I just I looked out on it, and then I stuck a door between me and them. Then I took all of the gold and then took the, and got onto the gem seam. And there was a little bit of back and forth, but not too much. And then basically they just stopped producing because I, I choked them. And it's it, amazing how much variation there is in that game. For yeah, such an old really game, it's awesome. Oh, it's a fantastic game. I think one my one problem with Dungeon Keeper, and this is a kind of problem with the mechanic more than the game itself, is that the combat is weirdly uh, out of your control. Yes and no. There are certain ways to control it, and you, you get good at that the more you play it. I think I was I was very much of that opinion. I um I started playing it. I was like, I'm getting a bit sick of not being able to control my minions. I'm sick of a Sorry, I'm sick you of. You can possess them. It's not even. I don't even do that. But it, yeah, the yeah. One of the main tactics that I've found is using doors and locking the doors. I played so many levels before I figured out that you could lock doors. And if you right, if you if you design your dungeon incorrectly, for example, uh, demon spawn are compulsive trainers, and if they run into they run into your training room, they'll just suck all your gold out of you. But they'll get to level ten, cool. But they're not that great a fighter. They're okay, you know, they'll do a job. But if they suck all the training, if you don't lock the door and basically chuck your demon spawn out. Um, you you have problems with them sucking your gold. If they if you then lock the door and lock like some bile demons and warlocks or whatever else you want in in that level uh, in in the training rooms for them to train, they then need to feed and um, sleep. So they need a layer and and then they also need to get gold when it's payday as well. So basically, you have to set up a little ecosystem. Well, I found a good tactic of setting up a little ecosystem. Um, Within the training area, that's all locked off. So, peep, so we can, I can set someone up training. They can go off and feed and sleep and uh, and get gold whenever yeah. they want. The other way to do it would be to let your demon spawn train up until the level that you are, then put them out on patrol. Um, patrol? Yeah, there should be like a. I forget what it's called. Oh, like do you mean the guard, guard thing? Yeah. If yeah. you Drop them in the guard room. They'll just keep walking around that. Right. Okay. Well, you have to obviously have to have a guard thing. For yeah, that, yeah. Uh, you have to have that researched. Um, I, I oh, get, did this, you have a combat hit in the original Dungeon Keeper? No, Dungeon I think it's Dungeon Keeper 2. No, well, you no have actually, to train I think it's the original as well. No, you, you train, don't. Oh, all right. Yeah, in Dungeon Keeper 2, you, tra you train them up to level 5, and the combat pick, pick gets them up to level 10. Right. That was one yeah. of the changes that people didn't like about DK1 to DK2 as well. I'm becoming quite an expert at DK1. I'm quite enjoy I'm really enjoying it. It's difficult though. Some of the it well, is. actually no, take that back. Some of the levels, that one particular level was insanely difficult. And the one after that, you basically have to kill four wizards based around a map. There's loads yeah. of gold everywhere and the wizards are like all level 7. So as soon as you get a couple of level 5s, 6, 7 dudes, you you've beaten them. And but you know, as long as you don't let your imps run out into like the center of the map it, you you can beat the map easy and yeah again it's just all management but i like that i like the fact that you can you can either be an overall kind of generic dungeon keeper or you can micromanage if you really really want I've, i opened up the graveyard last night as well so i've started <coughs> playing with vampires and uh skeletons, skeletons as well yeah which are dead uh skeletons. Enemies. you got the skeletons from the uh from the prison yes you have to you have to starve people and i didn't realize that until last night but i've had a prison for about three or four levels there's so there's such a learning curve in it as well it's mm. like it, there's so many little things that i keep missing i'm sure there's loads of things that i don't know yet and i'm i'm loving it i'm loving the discovery have you got um horny yet horny the horned yeah. reaper uh, um, no, I've got I got a dragon. I got a drake last night somehow. I don't know where yeah. it came from, but that's if it. you get a horned reaper, you've you got have to, to lock him away. You've got he to uh, does make not mix with anything. He'll just kick the fuck out of everything in your dungeon. Yeah, so you've got to make his a own little mini dungeon with a new dungeon. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got to make a sacrifice to get the horned reaper in one. I think. I think you have to have like something like two bile. I, I read a wiki somewhere that said a certain amount of bile demons or whatever, but I, I accidentally read that. I wasn't looking up for for it. I just found it somehow. <laughs> Yeah, um, but it does not play well with others. But yeah, there's the same with it's little things like the flies and the spiders don't get along together. Isn't that a lyric in a song? Uh, anyway, um, the, the, and the and it's like it's really annoying because the spider, the flies are so shit. The spiders just eat them immediately. But the flies are really good for like discovering areas Scout, on the map. Yeah. yeah, but you can't control where they scout either. Really, 
They just go off on their own little. You thing. should use perm. You should use um. Possess. What's it called? Possess more. Um, I've watched speedruns of Dungeon Keeper, and almost it's almost all done with possession, so you get direct control over things. Yeah, it's, it's worth no, using. It's, it is. I think it's the only one that's uh, free as well. It's it, very cheap, I think. I also unlocked um, disease last night as well. Spell which is like seven thousand gold for. There's your problem, it once. see. You've cast disease on yourself. <laughs> what me? Yeah, that's what? why you're drinking lem sip or whatever that is. It's Water, lemon. Uh, looks yellow. You? It's urine. Dodgy Blackpool water. Yeah, <laughs> it's because it's, it's in a tumbler. That's and plus there's a, I've got um, I've got a chroma thing going on over there, so it's bright green. So that's probably why it looks a bit. Anyway, <laughs> uh, hello, hello to people in chat. By the way, there's a few people in there. Hi, Zumba Pup, Corpse, uh, Tristan Hill, and uh, yes. So, I, uh, apart from that, I've I've played a bit more Last of Us Remastered, just a few hours. Quite again, quite enjoying it. It's it, to me, it's as ca it's quite casual. It's not as it's not as intense as Sam kind of made it out to be. But then again, I don't really consider Sam a real gamer. So <laughs> <laughs> it is it's it's a cinematic experience. There's quite a lot of um, it's not like totally cinematic. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of action in it, but. I find some of the sections a little bit frustrating. I'm a little bit like it's it's either hand holding or it's pushing me through it in a certain way. It's not letting me play it how I want to play it. And I don't like games like that. I don't like linear games that have forced me to do certain play in a certain style. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I still I'm still gonna play it and complete it eventually. So, nothing else? You haven't played anything else, guys? I haven't, I'm afraid. Well, yeah. we spent half an hour talking about Dungeon Keeper, so. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm suffering, suffering from a cold. So my oh dear. my uh, I'm I'm really really dry in my throat today. Uh, so let's move on to the uh, to the list section then. The way of the exploding list. <laughs> Do you like that? It's getting better every time. <laughs> This is performance <laughs> fucking art. It's getting slightly more horrendous every time. That's the problem. So, Lou, actually, if anyone else in chat has a, an idea for a list, please feel free to let us know. Uh, Lou? Yeah, I've, got, um, I've got two suggestions from last week as well that we can... Oh, let's do one of those then. I'll, I'll, I'll sit on this one because there were some good ones last week. Okay, so um, the, the the lists that they gave us aren't quite right, so I'm going to have to redo them a bit. First one was from Marty McFly last week, and it was top 10 most controversial video games of all time. So we'd have to change that to video games we find the most controversial, essentially, individually. Or... Okay. Uh, someone said, I think it was Corpse last week actually said, uh, top 10 girls in games. So we would have to say something like favourite girls in video games or, or least favourite girls in video games. I can give you plenty of least favourite because there's a lot that really annoy because me. Because you're a massive misogynist. Yeah, it's that. It's not, it's not that. It's because of the way that they're presented in games, but we could then get into the old argument about... Let's do it then. Let's, let's do girls. Yeah? Yeah. So no, is it standout girls or favourite girls or... Favourite girls or... I f just well, I think girls. annoying girls is too easy. As I said, for me it is anyway. Only because I said only because of the, only because of the, the the way that they're portrayed. You know, the, the way that they're all you know not always, but quite often they're portrayed in a uh, in a sexist way or in a in a uh, that they're useless. You know, that they're, they're just they're just you just drag them around type thing. So maybe maybe we do favorite. I think that's a bit more difficult, isn't it, to come up with. Uh, Favorite yeah. girls. I mean, immediately, I know Sam would come up with the boss in Metal Gear Solid Three mm. because she is a. There's something that's happening as well. We still haven't played the end of Metal Gear Solid Three, so there's something that's going to happen that I know will. It's kind of solidif solidify her character in the Metal Gear Solid kind of world. Um. I think this is quite a limited scope. One, I'd like. It's almost like favorite character who's female. So it's like favorite characters, which I think we've done, but now we're limiting ourselves to one gender. Okay. Um, so I'm I'm not so sure that this is a great, great question because I'd rather do favorite characters, and some of them might happen to be girls, which they are. Well, we've we've already done favorite exactly, characters. Exactly. So, so we can't do that. So okay, let's scrap that one. Yeah, let's put that one in the bin and poo on it, because I poo in the bin. Toilet's just there, mate. 
<laughs> just there. I like the bin. I know exactly where it is from where you're sat, so <laughs> go to the toilet. Don't poo in the bin. So the other one was... Um, Most controversial video games. Let's do that one. Let's do that one then, because um, we've all been... We've all had moments where we've been a bit... about a game. And I, I can think of one straight away from my childhood that really... <laughs> It's controversial in the sense that I'd never seen anything like it before, and it was like disturbing, and it was Creatures on the Commodore 64. I love that game. Why is that controversial? Yeah, because I'd never seen cutesy cartoon characters getting cut in half with chainsaws and the blood squirting onto the roof. All right. Yeah. It was like it was like completely wrong. It's like when you first you first see your first like anime, and you're watching a cartoon that suddenly becomes really violent or full of sex or swearing or something. It's like. You, you're expecting something and then suddenly it turns it on its head and that's what Creatures did for me. It was re really, it disturbed me. I really enjoyed that game. From from my recollection, and tell me if I'm wrong here, Creatures, you, you basically, you had to get Creatures from one side of a map to another and there was loads of, um, it was like, a, well, some of them were conveyor belts, sometimes you just have to get them to walk over things and there'd be traps and different puzzles that you had to solve. No, no. When creatures was a platform way. game. Um, and they had these bonus levels called the torture chambers where there was basically one of your mates about to get killed in some horrible way but and like on a conveyor belt or something like that and you had to to, to do something in time to stop it yeah that's, that's and if probably you stopped the bit it, i remember the thing, the thing that was trying to kill your friend killed itself in some <laughs> com comedy way otherwise your friend got killed in some comedy way but it was really gruesome like these these cute characters getting chopped in half with chainsaws or Dragged through spinning saw blades or something like that. Oh, yeah, but yeah, the, the, the main game was kind of a platformer. Yeah, that yeah. Looking at the um, looking at the screenshots, I do remember it. Yeah, is what I thought. Acme so yeah, Press. <laughs> uh, that was a game that was con definitely controversial at the time. Another one that had a similar effect on me was um, the Immortal on the Mega Drive, which oh. had this. this it was another, it was isometric sort of um, RPG style game, but it had really gruesome deaths, like your guy could like burst enemies' heads and stuff like that, and it really relished it, like the, the screen darkened and people's heads popped and stuff. Um, okay. Now, I, I, I'm going to say GTA. Was so, it controversial to you, though? Well, at the time it was. I was, well, I, I, you know what, I'd have to opt out from this whole list if I, if I took that route because I don't care I, I really don't care that the I've played I've played games where I've played like on the Commodore 64 I played a game called strip poker right and it was Sam Fox by any chance yeah Sam Fox uh, Sam Fo in fact it was <laughs> Sam Fox's strip poker and yep. I I played that on my own you know without when my you know I got it I got a tape from a friend it was something I didn't tell my parents about and I played it when they were out the house type thing and it was it it was just just nude pictures, you know, and and it took it ages and ages. I had to learn how to play poker in order to get these, <laughs> these girls naked. Boobs. Yeah, and that's all it was. But that that would be controversial, you know. I don't. I don't think it's to me. It's not. I don't really get offended by many things. I mean, I get offended by um, ignorance. I think and and stereo, you know, stereotyping. That's if people are being serious about it. My sense of humour is very much a, a non-politically correct sense of humour. I like things that take the piss out of political correctness, but we all know that. That's kind of what we all... We all have this, a similar kind of sense of humour. Um, hi to Josie in the chat. Um, she's asking if you play strip poker with friends. I'm would assuming I? that I am one of your friends, and therefore I'm going to say on your behalf, no, he would not. I would. I'd play, I'd play with Lou. Don't, uh, don't encourage him. I don't want to see it. <laughs> well, that's what I've we're doing this weekend. I've already seen it, in fact. I don't want to see it again. Have you? What did that happen? <laughs> in your sleep. Oh, right. Oh, I've, I've slept at your house a few times, so... <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll make sure to clean it next time. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Would you play strip poker with friends? Oh, the Sam Fox game. All ah, right. Um... I don't know. I was always a bit funny about that kind of thing as a kid, and I, and I'm not the kind of guy. There's a lot of guys in the world that enjoy watching adult material with other guys. I now, <laughs> sorry, not not into that. Not in, it's a bit weird if you ask me. It's a bit funny. Uh, I've never been. I've never been a fan of that, and and that's probably the similar. Well, at that age now, yeah, I probably have a laugh with it. I'd probably stream it for God's sake, but 
but it's, you know. plenty of that has happened at land parties before. I it's don't, been... That's the thing. I've always I've walked past people, and I've walked past male, female. I've walked past people laughing at stuff, and, and I, some of our friends, in fact, that find certain types of uh, adult material extremely funny. And I don't get it. I don't. I just like that's that's for private. You know, you know, that's, that's, for, <laughs> that's for private time. Don't sit there and watch it at a LAN party. What if some it's people, funny, share it. That's the thing. Some people don't even do that. Some people sit there at a LAN party with the headphones on at two o'clock in the morning, just watching porn like that. And like, just watching it. Just <laughs> just getting really engrossed in the story. Yeah, yeah, getting, I wonder if the like plumber will like fix that pipe. <laughs> what? What? I don't. There's one use. There's one use. I'm really use for worried that about stuff. a TV. Maybe a TV doesn't work anymore. He doesn't look like a qualified electrician. I just... <laughs> Is he gas safe? Do you wonder? <laughs> How many pills do you really think he's cleaned? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let's let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> Steve, you haven't said anything for ages. What, what, are, you, are you still Sorry. there? Fucking listening. <laughs> if, will you keep cutting out? Come on, tell us. Wait, if I can't have that. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> most controversial games come on you must have one at least see I'm kind of on the same sort of vein as you Chris where one of the earliest memories I've got is playing, com is playing computer games and I've always played them and I uh, grown up I had two older brothers and my oldest brother who was 10 years older than me I used to kind of get his hand me down computers and consoles so he already came with a load of games a lot of these games were of a more mature kind of like nature, not mm. to do pornographic, but they were normally quite graphic. So I remember playing them when I was tiny. I, I remember watching things like Hellraiser and Freddy Krueger when I was like six, seven year old, and it just doesn't phase me. I don't think I've ever been phased by anything I've saw on a computer. Well, game. What about if we change it to something like offensive games? F games that we found offensive, not necessarily controversial, but. Postal 2. I felt left a bad taste in my mouth. They tried to do a South Park and tick the piss out of everything. Yeah. But the way it did it was really in bad taste, I think. I didn't feel bad about that. I just felt slightly embarrassed for them. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, guys, you know, this is... <laughs> you know, I, I can it, I appreciate a joke, but this is just getting silly. You're just getting attacked by loads of um, Osama Bin Laden's or... Uh, yeah. who's, who's the little guy? Gary uh, Coleman. Or Gary or Coleman, yeah. <laughs> Like, you have to have a pitch battle with Gary Coleman in the middle of a mall. <laughs> what, what, what's Postal 2 about? Because I don't actually... I've never um, played, really Postal. played it. You, you're, just, you're just some dick who is in a town in Arizona, I think, it's somewhere like that. Park and... Yeah, and basically every day you've got to go out and do something mundane, like go and buy the shopping or go and get a job. Right. And something apocalyptic ha happens on that day. And you, you, you like the boss fight is normally something like you got to fight against all the terrorists or something like that and then you go back to your trailer and the next day starts and each day it gets more and more crazy mm. and it's very fourth wall thing and the, the um running with scissors the uh, studio that made the game or a feature in the game as well they actually have a studio or the, the, their studio is in the game right it's quite, it's quite meta uh, yeah, I, I don't, I can't even picture it. I don't. I, I, I played the original. Played the original. The original was like a top-down uh, sort yeah, of like puzzle Grand shooter. Theft, original Grand Theft Auto, wasn't it? Kind of, yeah, but it didn't scroll, or it didn't scroll much, and the backgrounds were hand-drawn and hand-painted. I'm really struggling to f even find offensive games. I mean, I, I can be offended by games like Assassin's Creed Three, where there was so many bugs that I was, I was offended <laughs> to the point of I'm boycotting Ubisoft from now on. You know, but. I think it's difficult to be offended by games in that sense now because there are so many people ready to kick the shit out of it if it does offend anyone. But I can remember a lot of games which disturbed me and controversial in that way. And it was like, uh, because I'm like staying that I a lot of my early mem memories are of games. Um, a lot of my firsts have happened in games, like the first time I've seen some like decapitation or even it, weirdly the first time I saw porn was on an Amiga. Same here, Stag. Son yeah, Son of Stag. Son of Stag. <laughs> well, I don't think it was called Son which, of Stag. Which but... was controversial in itself and it was it again, it was like a weird experience. I'm not going to go into the details but it was like... It was shit. It, it, it was, yeah it was. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it I mean, was also... again, let's not go into the detail but still, it's, yeah. it's still like well, it didn't offend me 
you know, I was a kid. I kind of, I was intrigued by that kind of stuff. I was a boy specifically. I don't think girls were necessarily that interested in that kind of content. But I don't. Well, I can only speak for myself. But there wasn't any girls that I knew that were into computers. Me neither. Not to say that there wasn't any girls, but there wasn't any that I knew. No. I, I, was read, a lot of girls, I was reading an article the other day that said something like um, the reason, the, I mean, originally programmers, uh, most programmers, professional programmers were girls, you know, some, I think one of the pioneers of, uh, of programming, programming languages was uh, a female, I can't remember her name, I'm really sorry to, to you. Mrs. Yeah, a, Mrs. Lo female, a lot but. of, um, a lot of the computer operators when computers first popped up were basically typists who were retrained to use computers and they became programmers and just very good at computers but but then in the 1980s the basically because of uh, you know games coming out they were basically marketed to boys teenagers young young males basically and I don't do a market in that way because the first uh, among well the majority of the first games that were made weren't made necessarily by big corporations who were made by people in the bedrooms just wanting to make something that they wanted to play. Yeah, okay, the first set of games, what I'm saying, when when you started getting Codemasters and, and right. Acclaim and, you know, all, all the people that did have a little bit of a budget for games, the mar they did market, I've seen a number of adverts that were basically scantily clad women on it, you know, mm. and it's, it's, it, that's why there's more males these days that play games because of the marketing back in the day and it's, you know, not just games, programmers and uh, and, and the like. Uh, I, again, I don't know the the ins and outs of it. I'm not I'm not really going to go too far into it. But I, I I was under the impression that that was that was basically why more more boys play games these days. Or um, yeah. Interestingly, so I, there was there was a game on the spectrum called Task Force. I might have mentioned this actually, um, and it was emblazoned very visibly on the loading screen. It was made by someone called Sonya Knight. Okay. And it turned out that Sonya Knight was not a girl. It was a pseudonym for um, a guy um, mm -hmm. who was just trying something out to see if his game would sell more if it was very obviously made by a woman. And it's Paul Griffith um, who made it. But I, I thought that was interesting. That stuck in my mind, actually. That game stuck in my mind. And also the fact that it was made by a woman because it was so such a rarity. So yeah. I guess it kind of worked in a way. Strange marketing method. Hmm. But we're talking about offensive games here, not not women in in games. No, so, no I don't know. How we got to that actually. Yeah, I'm not sure how we got there. But I remember there being a bit of hoo ha over um, was it Elvira on the Amiga? Don't yeah, but wasn't it wasn't the hoo ha of the movie as well, though? Possibly. I, I just remember as a kid there was a lot of kind of fuss about it, and I couldn't really. But see there was it. there was also um there was a there was a Your Sinclair magazine cover um for Barbarian, and it had um a Page Barbarian. Three girl Page Three girl on the cover in kind of a leopard skin bikini or something like that and that got a, that got moved to the top shelf that magazine because of that cover even though there was nothing on display it was a bikini hmm. and a furry one at that but <laughs> but yeah that that one got a lot of um a lot of bad press yeah there was issues around that at the same time there was like horrible monsters with the faces exploding and things like that and blood and guts and gore as soon as a furry wrapped pair of boobs appeared on there it became controversial because again maybe it was marketed to kids and put you know d displaying sexual content to kids is inappropriate or was it you know l it was less inappropriate than it is these days and it's still not particularly appropriate now either i just want to find that cover and paste it into yeah i remember barbarian and to be fair that was one of the first violent games i ever played i was uh i did i did love it though i was remember the little orc that used to run across uh, like when, as soon as you yeah, decapitate you slices someone, it off you just yeah. the screen just the game itself up. picked up quite a bit of controversy because of that as well but i think it was more the fact that they had um oh, i found it uh this barbarian too but they had their wolf from the gladiators on there <laughs> as well right there you go check that out that is actually Wolf. It's not someone who looks like him. It is actually Wolf. Is it <laughs> in the Skype as well, though? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so yeah, that's, yeah, I've got that. Yeah. But I'm struggling. I can't think of any other controversial games. There isn't any controversial games. To us, there isn't. Because we're sensible, level-headed people that don't have preconceptions of, of games making people mental and going on shooting rampages. Doom. That was controversial, but is it? Con it's not controversial to us. We loved it. 
Well, more combat. If we're going to talk about games that were generically controversial, I mean, that was silly. I mean, just watching that that trailer last week for Mortal Kombat 10's Fatalities, I swear to God, it just made me laugh. It was like it this was. is utterly ridiculous. Very, very graphic and violent. Don't get me wrong, but that's why it's got 18 on it. You know, <laughs> it's uh, it's for people who can make their own, dis- you know, make their own mind up and aren't yeah. really I mean, influenced by do you it. Remember uh, the Carmageddon. That was yeah. reboxed because it was seen as too violent. All blood turned green. Well, that was yeah. There was the Australian and the German versions had zombies instead of uh, people, and zombie right. cows instead of real cows. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> apparently, the uh, the Japanese and German versions of Grand Theft Auto Five are cut. I'm surprised the Japanese version is. I can see the German one. The Germans are quite strict with their censorship, but. The Japanese are kind of weird with their censorship and it the sense of very specific things, yet mm. other things seem to get through just fine. But you can't have a cock on there. No. Like you can have a tentacle. Well, you can, you just can't have a frenulum. <laughs> we can have as many tentacles as you like. <laughs> <coughs> yes. Alright, so maybe we move on. Yes. Frenulum's been mentioned now, we need to move on. We can't, yeah. can't go anywhere from there. So my th- my throat's giving me proper gyps, so that's why I'm being a lot quieter this week. Okay. Uh, right, so onto the news, onto the news, rumours, etc. Um, YouTube released some new monetization t- terms this week. It's not strictly about gaming this, but it relates to game streamers, people who make money on on uh, on YouTube, etc. Um, obviously, I'd like to hear people's opinions on this, and if it's if it's been a big thing, you know, people from the chat as well. I've I, I, it's. To me, it sounds like everybody is going to make a little bit of money instead of having to rely on... It. You know, if someone subscribes to your channel, essentially, 55% of that of that subscription goes to creators, and it goes to creators based on their views. So that, to me... me it, it, and the, they've used some language in there that I don't fully follow, but basically, you're going to get very, very little unless you're a massive channel. Yeah. Uh, uh, Josie's mentioned the Nintendo thing. I think we talked about that a few weeks ago, didn't we? But Nintendo's special arrangement with uh, with YouTubers where they basically took a cut of their monetization. So if they monetized their videos with Nintendo content, Nintendo would be cool with that as long as they shared some of that with Nintendo. Which right. is a very strange sort of third-party way of doing things. I think I've got that right. I, d- I don't know. I, d- I missed this one. I missed this boat, but... I mean, I don't do Nintendo content myself, so I don't do much content about from this, to be fair. But. Yeah. Um, but I don't know about this, because I, I watch YouTube with Adblock on. I don't tend to see ads. I know oh, that... Don't say that. Don't say that out loud on the internet. Sorry, oh, but the, the, thing is, the thing is, though, a lot of the YouTube channels I watch acknowledge the people watch um, with Adblock. Um, Guile, who I watch for um, Supreme Commander replays, talks about it, and he jokes about it. Like, he knows that most of his audience are using Adblock. So this is really a way for YouTube to <laughs> to to monetize the fact that more people are becoming savvy and avoiding ads. So they're getting I don't know. It's it I don't really have an opinion on this as such. But... Uh, that, well, no, that's the thing is <laughs> is it is getting to a point where nobody everyone's got ad block in, enabled and ad block is quite good at disabling adverts. You get occasionally you'll get a website that pops up with a little a little message that says please please stop using ad block please um you're you know you're reading our content for free please allow us to make money off your views but I, I agree that's fine but don't fucking spam us with adverts make it some other way there must be other ways to make money mm. you know there must be a sustainable product if, if you the adverts if you... start to be as intrusive as well like why does it have to if, if you go to youtube and watch a video why do you have to watch a full screen video why can't this be a banner well some of it sometimes it is depends on what they've got enabled on the the i mean i enable adverts on our on our videos that we upload there might be one running underneath us right now when we we're on youtube i'm not going to sit and whinge about it i've made five pound in the last five years you know on on youtube and that's from all of my channels it's youtube i, I, I mean youtube are champion the champion championing their best um, content creators. I mean, I saw something today where the two top um, British YouTube 
star Zoella and her friend, stroke partner, are getting uh, Madame Tussauds treatment. Right. So Madame Tussauds are making waxworks of YouTube stars. Are they making it of the little of the, box? Of them? No, of the, not of the... <laughs> <laughs> sat down at a computer or are they doing something like playing tennis or fucking I don't know what they're doing exactly but it's the fact that I mean these are people who popped up in the last year or so and yeah. they're already getting waxworks so, which I know is a blatant move by Madame Tussauds to get back in the, the public eye because the scene is a bit old Outdated, fashioned now yeah. but well you know what right? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I'm going to put it out there and I'm going to get some hate for this but if you want to make money go and get a job you know uh, sorry but uh, fair enough there's, there's a, quite a lot of YouTubers that are making a lot of money from lots and lots of views that's fine that's perfectly fine right i mean obviously they've got a personality that people want to see but if you want to make money stop I, I either work very very hard have a great personality and become popular on by streaming or youtube or go and get a job work towards something that everybody else on the planet has to work towards i'm not doing this to make money i'm doing this because i want to talk to you guys and i want to it's nice that we've got people viewing you know i'm appreciative of it it's nice when we get a donation, but that donation is never going to sit and sustain the channel. There's no way in hell, unless we had hundreds of thousands of viewers and millions of hits every week, that we would ever make money from it. Uh, you, uh, we've got Josie in, in chat who used to do MMO buff, and she used to work her ass off for that. And as far as I can see, she never did it for money. She did it for the love of the, the people that were helping her out to get the channel up there, and the love of the, the information flow, basically. I'm doing this because I'm enjoying it. I'm not doing it because I, I would ever want to make a living off it. If it ever happens, awesome. Mm. But pff, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna whinge about it if someone blocks an advert on the, on a site that I'm getting free advert. You know, free money from for advertising and putting a video up there that takes very little of my effort. Really, you know, very little of my time to to edit and put together. I totally agree. I, I when I, when you started talking, there, I thought, uh, hmm. Hang on a sec. But then when I realised what you were saying, it, it is actually right. If you're going on there just to make money, if what your your plan in life is to make a lot of money by being a celebrity, then you know, fuck off basically. I mean, if if your plan in life is ball. to come on and entertain people and and just by being the sort of person that people like, show people that and make them happy, then that's great. That's what you know, that's there's what so the world's people, all about. Making there's so people many people happy. that I like that I've, I'm follow on Twitter that'll occasionally have a rant about people because they're content creators. They've got a couple of hundred followers, maybe a couple of thousand sometimes. And the, the, uh, remember that a couple of thousand people following you on Twitter is naff all. That, is, that means you nobody knows you. Nobody cares about you. You have to work very, very, very hard in order to get any kind of recognition. We are pissants in, in comparison to the, the rest of YouTube. We have, we've got nothing, no followers. We're, we're not interested to people. The people that are, are, This is Chris's motivational speech, by the way. It is. But the, 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 this the, is a Richard the Third speech, Chris. The, the point I'm trying Friends, to make... The point I'm trying nothing. to make is, is stop overstepping your... your ego essentially you're not interesting if you're not getting viewers and you're not pushing yourself to to get we're we're probably really uninteresting to people I, I, I said that's not what i'm doing this for we just decided to decide uploading this it gives me the, re, the reason i do this is because it gives me a good excuse every week to talk to the people that i love that is why I'm doing this. It gives me a good excuse to talk to you two and Sam and and we have guests on occasionally just to kind of mix it up a little bit. We don't we don't I don't spend all of my time doing this. Fair enough I did when we first started because you had to get things going and kind of, you know, put a bit of effort into the organization, but now it takes me 5 minutes a week, you know, to to sort this out. It's it's it does my head in that people think that they can make money off by doing very little over <laughs> rant done i work my tits off to earn what I earn, like in a living and it just it just it gets on my nerves that that people think they can make money off, off by doing nothing literally nothing playing some games oh god oh shit I, I, i'm in my spare time I'm, i've washed dishes for a living and in my spare time i've i, I want to make some i want to be a millionaire on youtube and be just by playing games and showing off my personality you haven't got a personality shut up about it Sorry, <laughs> I've, I've, I'm, I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for that. I don't care. In fact, I'm not going to get a lot of hate because no one knows. Because <laughs> no one watches. 
<laughs> Unless that ends up on Vine or something, or so someone goes viral or something. No, Unlikely. I'm not, I'm not articulating. Actually, yeah, that's was, that was quite a bit more than six seconds, isn't it? Uh, uh, thank you, Josie. I love you too. Oh, Get a I'm, room. My, my throat hurts now. <laughs> His throat hurts. It does, it does. Right, so we were talking about YouTube monetization terms. I I don't know if it's a good thing or not. I think time will tell. We might actually make a little bit more money than we currently do. Because if I understand it right, um, they, they now spread that 55% across a, some kind of demographic or something and you get a little bit, depending on how many views you get, rather than getting... Um, money from advertising and when people block the site you don't get money from it at all and to be fair even if they don't block it the amount of views that channels like us get is is nothing and you're very unlikely to make much money at all so i think the fact that you guaranteed some income for every view excuse me that is subscribed i think that's good bad ugly hmm I don't know enough about this. I really haven't researched oh, it. But the channels... I tend to feel that Google make good decisions and they make very democratic decisions. And if they make a shitty decision, it soon gets overturned. So I think generally, I know this is an idealistic way to look at it, but I think generally Google act in the interests of the people that use their products. Yeah, no matter how many haters you've got, yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. Uh, okay, you're not guaranteed income, according to Josie. She's obviously put a bit more effort into reading this. I, I read this about a week ago, and I've been busy, busy, busy since. So, um, The channels that will get the money are arbitrarily selected by YouTube. So, arbitrarily, that means that we could be selected, surely? Random, yeah. almost? Is that random, or is it arbitrarily like, oh, he looks popular this week, or they look popular this week, or there must be some algorithm in the background, because there's no way they'll have a YouTube, a, a YouTube employee. Curator. Yeah, there's no way they'd have that, because they don't even have a, a support number at the moment, do they, or anything like that? I think the amount of calls they'd get would make it unbelievable. But that also means, then, in that case, if they, if that... I think I read somewhere that they might arbitrarily select a channel to be featured as well, which means that they would get more views. Yeah. So maybe, I, I don't know, this could... Sorry, Steve, you're really, really quiet. I can't hear you. I'll just continue to be gay on my own. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Witcher 3 expansion already announced, and the game isn't even out yet. Yeah, but we, we we do expect that. That's why games I don't expect the season that. pass. I don't, I'm sick of it. I'm absolutely sick of it. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I've got Witcher 3 free with my graphics card. Um, it's a 40, it's 50 quid game. No, I probably will, actually. I'll probably play <laughs> that over the over 1 and 2 because I can't be asked with 1 and 2 now. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm well past that. I think um, I'm just getting a bit annoyed with the fact that why not just include it in the game? I know it's all marketing shit, but it, it's... It's all marketing shit, man. It is marketing shit, but why? Why are people still buying into this? Why? Because it's because it's convenience, isn't it? Oh, I enjoyed playing that game, so I'm going to download some more stuff, or I'm going to buy new, another expansion. At least yeah, that's like expansion. the whole point of DLC. Oh, I enjoyed the game, so I'll buy more of it. That's the whole point. But they're all. <laughs> <laughs> it's an impossible situation though it's it's just going to get worse and worse and worse if people don't stop saying they've already developed this it's already ready to play pretty much why not release it with the game you know i know why not because of the marketing shit and they want to make yeah. more money but yeah, stop it capitalism's awesome but it's also terrible <laughs> Come okay, on. okay. Give me some feedback. Don't well, let me I, just I, sit here and rant all night. Uh, you're um, doing such a good job of it, though. <laughs> to be honest, it's something I kind of expect. Yeah. Do, do you tolerate it, though? It's, yeah. It's 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 the way the market's going, Chris. You're not going to change it. I, I don't expect that to change it. I've got to say, the, the only game that I've really bought into the DLC for has been Borderlands 2. Because the DLC was fantastic. But did you know that at the time? Um... What do you mean? Did, did you know, know that the... when you bought it, or did you just get it because you liked the game? Well, no, but they, they didn't do that that way. They didn't do it with the intention to do DLC, I don't think. Although, then again, maybe they probably did, or they probably planned it at least, but they also intended to do it right if they did, because they did do it right. They didn't farm it out like they did with Borderlands 1. 
Because the DLC for that was pretty bad. I, I, I haven't played but the DLC But then you look at something like Civ Five. Civ Five has got, got... I've lost count of how much DLC there is for that game. Yeah. Well, that's because you can buy all the nations separately. And mm. with Civ Five, to be honest, it does make the game a hell of a lot better. I, I haven't played it without any of the expansion stuff. And now this is... I don't buy into da downloading DLC really generally. I mean, once I've played a game, I've played it and I'm done with it, usually. I'm, I'm, I've usually had enough of it or I enjoyed it enough to play it again from the start, so I don't bother with the DLC. Uh, I have occasionally bought maps back when I used to play COD with my friends because my friends had bought them, but that was the only reason because I wanted to play with my friends. These days, I'm, I don't do that so much, so I don't really download DLC at all. I get DLC when it comes as part of a bundle, you know, if I get like all of the, um, I've got all of the Saints Row 4 stuff for five quid, you know, Saints Row 4 plus all the DLC. I sp honestly, I spent more time clicking through the DLC going, you've unlocked this, you've unlocked that, than I did playing the bloody game on that. There was that much of it. But people could easily, you know, people do go out and buy it separately, don't they? Here's a question for you then, Chris. If if you come to a game late, would you buy the game with all the DLC, the full pack, the Depends. Game of the Year edition or whatever? Depends on how much it costs, and yes, I have done that a number of times. I would probably try to do that. If it's not too much more expensive, it's a couple of quid, I don't mind that, because it's usually quite cheap, the game, by then anyway. You know, if, if you look on a site and it's got 20 quid for the game and then 25 quid for the game plus all DLC, I usually don't even look what the DLC is, I'll go five quid, whatever, you know? Mm. But... I don't know, it depends on how much it is, it really does. And it depends on how much, sometimes how much DLC I'll get, but I don't generally look at it, so I said. I mean, they, they are playing essentially on the, 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 the very um, sensible idea that if someone enjoys something, they want more of that thing. And the, 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 the easy way to do that is to, to make more of what's already there rather than make a sequel. You know what? I'm bitter. I'm bitter because a lot of my favourite games never got DLC. I'm talking about the Deus Exes. Deus Ex with new missions would be... Ah, oh. oh. But the thing is, the, um, the, the community had that game for ages. There's a level editor, there's a mission editor, so why aren't we spaffing about that? Because it's effort. I haven't got time to Someone else do needs that to do these it. Days. Yeah, someone else needs to do it. And it's because no, we want I, the original team to do it, so therefore I'm we just, want official DLC. I said I, I'm just bitter. That's all it is. I'm just bitter yeah. that I didn't get it back in the day. And, and when, when we got expansions, we paid for the expansions like a fair amount of money. Like all of the Command and Conquer Red Alert stuff, all of that. That was that was expansions you'd buy and you'd you'd I get think separately. Part of, I think part of the bitterness comes from the fact that we are also of a generation that's used to getting lots of stuff for free with games. Like we get a game come out and then it have shitloads of mods and maps and and models and things like that. Unreal and Quake and stuff. We had so many maps to choose from. There's thousands of maps and and mods and add-ons and things for that. Now, the games are not very moddable. No. The new Unreal Tournament is interesting that they are going for a completely community-based model to that, but they're basically using the App Store model mm. of allowing people to have a marketplace to sell the stuff and they take a cut of it. But not many games are doing that now. There's not many. I can't think of any really moddable games apart from stuff like Minecraft. There are quite a few. When you look at on the Steam, uh, look at yeah, Skyrim, for example. Skyrim, yeah, Skyrim. There's, there's, there's yeah. quite a lot. I mean, um, Don't Starve has got lots and lots of mods. Does it? But they built it into it. Yeah, loads of mods that you can download. St st I think a lot of developers tend to, uh, PC developers anyway, tend to look at try and integrate it with the Steam Workshop these days. Uh, not all of them, obviously, but quite a lot. And it's the Steam Workshop is mainly for the community to develop stuff for them. But you do get the occasional vendor-based uh, thing thing on there as well. And then you've got the DLC model on on Steam as well. Mm. But yeah, it's, it's distinctly different. I think I'm just I, we we've got to a point now. I think I'm just I'm just getting old. I'm just getting bitter. I'm getting to the point where I'm I'm sick to death of games being as popular as the bloody are, you know. And I want them to be mine. And I want them to. I want, <laughs> I, I want me and my friends to be the the cool kids that aren't cool at all, you know. And and everyone laughs at us. I liked it back then. I liked being the one with. I liked being the one with all of this 
cool this, these cool worlds to play with, with and everybody else just mocked us because they didn't appreciate it but now everybody appreciates it and it's not good anymore there's one there's, <laughs> there's one thing that I, I got a little moment of that not long ago actually um, one of my cousins came round um, and came into my bedroom and noticed that I had two huge monitors and, and a desktop PC and I, everyone has a laptop these days and no one had seen he had never seen like two monitors connected to one PC before and a when, PC this big. Whenever I have um, someone come upstairs uh, for whatever reason, I had I usually. It's, to be fair, most of the people I have in my house are programmers <laughs> and people that are, you know, people that are geeky anyway. So they they kind of know this kind of setup. But when I occasionally get someone like a builder, maybe or someone like that that comes up and happens to look at my my rig in my room, it's like three monitors, all this fancy sound stuff, and you know, big PCs and rack mounts, and they they they're just they're just looking. Do they at me ask going, how much it's worth. No, no. Uh, what? Well, well, one or two people do, but yeah, generally it's just a God. How do you how do you manage all that? It's like, well, it's my life. It's what I do, you know. <laughs> I find I it difficult to work on a computer that's got less than two screens. To be honest, yeah, I I actually know. have quit jobs, uh, quit contracts before now because they wouldn't give me a second monitor and they wouldn't let me bring one in or use my own. Equipment. You can't agree anyway, Luke, because you're the fucking monitor Grinch when it comes to land parties. Come on, you, you don't need two monitors for a LAN. You do not need two monitors for a LAN. I had yes. limited space on my desk. No, look, look, Steve, I've got, I'm on. I'm actually on Lou's side for once here because you're a bender as well. <laughs> only because only I want to bring three monitors, but you don't need them. You really don't need them. No, you don't. But I also don't need a chair. I can survive happily without one. <laughs> but you know, it's more comfortable. I, I'll enjoy my weekend more with a chair. <laughs> I don't think you'd enjoy it. It's usually, power it's usually a power thing as well. It's nothing to do with the cost of power, I don't think, usually. It's the, the fact that if you have too many... If everyone brought three monitors to a LAN party, and it'd be it's three times just, as much it's, power. It's purely simple. It's just space. And two space. monitors takes up way too much space. Oh. Are you bringing two monitors this weekend, Lou? No. Why not? You've got plenty of space. Actually, think about it. I'm, I'm going to be working on programming and art, so yes, I might do. Yeah, you dick. In oh, fact, fucking well. look at him. Look at him. True monitors. You put me in a really dodgy position there, Chris. I'm, that, yeah, that was really right. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not a LAN party, though, is it? It's, it's not, not a LAN party. party. It, it, well, it kind of is. It Game dev, you need at least eight monitors. At least, at least. <laughs> I'm considering another eight as well, on top of the eight <laughs> I've already got. Next LAN party. Yeah, it needs to be enough room for at least two monitors for everybody. So, speaking of uh, LAN parties, gatherings, etc., and this weekend, this weekend is Ludum Dare. Excuse me. Uh, the voting has started for Ludum Dare. For those of you who, the, who are uninitiated in Ludum Dare, I've heard about it when I started doing game development, but it's a game jam. It's a kind of global game jam. There's a couple of thousand people that participate in it. Uh, there is a competition. Uh, version of it and there is also a jam version of it the competition is 48 hours you have to create a game from scratch create all your assets create everything yourself you can't re you can't reuse old code or um i don't know how how that's policed but generally you have to release all of your source code etc as well uh, and all your assets the jam is a little bit more lenient you've got 72 hours you can work in a team or oh, the, the the compo as well you you have to be alone you have to do the game on your own um the jam means you can work with people you can use existing assets you can use existing code bases um you can have a massive team if you really want um and then after the 72 hours you submit your game me and lou are going to be doing it this weekend uh ld voting said kicked off on monday i think they're on round four now and round five is tomorrow and then the final round will be friday and then two o'clock on Saturday morning, the uh, GMT at least, anyway, it's six o'clock um, EST, I think it is. So me and Lou are probably going to be sat there refreshing the LD website, waiting for the theme to come in, potentially. Have you seen, have you seen number four on the, the latest voting rounds? Probably. It's number four is blue and black, white and gold. Oh, you keep yeah, switching I've, between the two. <laughs> I, I, I know that. I'm like, fuck off, trendy yeah. bastards. <clears throat> I hate everything trendy. I hate everything modern. Um, if everyone's looking at their compo, have you got that link, Steve? Can you see that? Nope. Steve, there. In Skype. Um, I can put it in Skype for you. Uh, I can't. I can't get on the website and be on Skype at the same time. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, there's some quite interesting themes here. Um, I'm trying to. I'm looking at all the themes, thinking, how can we make that into something about skeletons? 
<laughs> there, there's lots. And to be fair, mate, I, I, I'm not... a thousand years. Yeah. Got me skeletons in that. The yeah, skeletons yeah. and everything. Honestly, you could you every single one of the themes. I I, I can think of some mechanic, not to do with skeletons necessarily, but some mechanic <laughs> we can convert the gate, the type of game that we're going to do into. I'm really excited about it. I'm just hoping that this cold doesn't really kick me in the face because I'll be well pissed off if I can't concentrate and get involved in it. Yeah. But yeah, so that's it. Ludum Dares voting has started. If you're into into games and developing games, get on that. Um, it's my first game jam ever. Lou's done one before. Just one, is it, Lou? Just the one. Just the yeah. one. I really um, enjoyed it, though. And he got a top. He got a top pick as well. He got a, a, one of the judges gave him a, one of his a top three. How many people were in the competition? Uh, how many games were in Four. the competition? Uh, it's about thirty, I think. It's cool. It's still good. It's, mm. Not thousands like there is in London Dare, but it's still no. uh, still good. But yeah, basically, Lou and I are going to win. So, uh, that's that's out there now. That's the most positive thing I've ever heard you say ever. I'm always positive when I'm working with you, Lou. I'm I'm, I'm self-deprecating, but I'm not a negative person. I don't think I am anyway. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm self-deprecating and what's the word? Um, Realistic. Yeah, I suppose. I, I, I like to point out the the issues in things. I wouldn't say it's negative. I always have a, a positive attitude in terms of getting stuff done and coming up with answers. However, these are the problems that we ever had and these are the problems that we're going to face coming up. Let's get around them somehow. This, this is why you work in development and not marketing, no. Because marketing, it's all about... This is, this is how awesome this is going to be. Yeah, I, I, there's no chance of that. I'm a realist at the end of the day. <clears throat> Anyway. Right. GTA 4 PC version sells 1 Five. million copies in one day. GTA 4. GTA 5. That's a V. That's fine. Ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> see, it's a cold. It's start, I'm sta I can't see now. It's starting to, to affect me. You thought the V looked like I, 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 I. <laughs> yeah, I thought your mum looked like I, 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 I. <laughs> I, I. So, is that good? A million copies in a day? I, I have no idea. Um, I assume it is. Is there any is there anything which has come close to that or well being... probably on console it probably sold a lot more I would imagine um, I think it did in fact I think I did a report on this that, is from I, Steam uh... Spy actually isn't it yeah and that doesn't include copies sold outside Steam oh yeah it's a lot of money when you think about it if you times that by forty quid that'd be like. 40 million that would be 40, yeah. isn't it 60 quid <laughs> sorry isn't it 60 quid to buy it's, uh, it's between it's between 35 and 40 yeah hmm. on steam i think anyway yeah i'll be one of those numbers eventually maybe not straight away but yeah i might i might someday it. soon and for the rest of my life yeah <clears throat> New Guitar Hero Live with new guitar, controller, and no more failure states. What does I, that mean? I don't know. I've never you can't it. fail a song and get kicked out, I think. What? What's the point in that? God knows. Is this the new, is this the new nanny state that you can't, yeah. you can't no, use negative... No one's done bad. You've all, had, you've all played brilliantly. Well done. You've all had different it's degrees of win, essentially. <laughs> God damn it. Honestly, it was better when we used to get kicked in the face by our teachers at school. This is the end of any kind of progression for the human race, isn't it? We've got yeah. to that, haven't we? We must have reached that now. No failure state means... It's going to be like... In is it on com Incompetence, that book uh, by Rob yeah, Grant? Yeah. Where, no, it's politically incorrect to um, deny people jobs even if they're completely unsuitable for it. Yeah. Stupid, it's, it's like a disability. And, but that's... Yeah. That's a little bit like how it is now. It's really hard to fire someone from a job, even if they're incompetent and they don't want to do what you ask them to do. Unless they, they do something, like, vastly wrong. Gross like, negligence. Yeah, touch someone up or or basically refuse to come into work. In fact, I worked yeah. in one place where one guy didn't turn up for work for a week, came in, didn't explain himself to anybody, just came in, started his work again, the manager took him in an office, and the manager basically didn't get anything out of him. And we found out, right, This, this you like this, we found out eventually that this guy had spent a week 
playing EverQuest. Right, he played it all the time, <laughs> but he spent a week playing EverQuest really, really early in the morning so he could get married to his wife in Ever EverQuest because he was trying to get into like, his girlfriend or something. Real life kind of, well... It was an EverQuest girlfriend that turned into a real life girlfriend, and he was obsessed with. And oh, so basically, he was courting his mm. wife to be online in yeah. EverQuest. He just didn't turn, and then just one day, he just stopped coming to work entirely. <laughs> so, all right, for some minute. <laughs> Clearly, has other sources of income. No, I don't think he did. I think he lived with his parents or whatever. But I think he was well, just. I hope he at least made care. eight pounds a month to pay for the EverQuest subscription. The annoying, the annoying thing was that he. Uh, uh, he was a, he was my senior at the time. I was a junior, and he was teach he was kind of teaching me how to do some some partic a particular programming language. And uh, yeah, I was I was like I was working much harder than he ever was, and I was getting well pissed off because he was earning so much more than me as well. I was like, why? But yeah, we know how that works. Come on, someone else reads the fact my voice is going. Right, um, Bill Paxton and Dan Radcliffe in talks to start a BBC dram dramatization of rock star. Um, called Grand Theft Auto, I believe, as well. I've seen something about this. Um, BBC have done some really, really good dramatizations of stuff like this. They did the um, the uh, Sinclair versus Acorn thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, what was it called again? Um, um, I can't remember the name of the the the, um, the the program, but it was very good. It had um, it had what's his name. Oh god, I'm so crap at remembering things. You're terrible at everything. I am. I am. But it was yeah. really good. And I, yeah. I think that Bill that they could do... That's it. Yeah, Martin Freeman and it had uh, it had the the tall guy as well from Lord, yeah. Lord of the Rings. No. Doesn't matter. <laughs> but it was really really good. I wasn't um, even listening to you. Sorry, you were boring me with your ums and ahs and uh, I think this will be good. Dan but I don't that, know anything that, about it. Is that Daniel Radcliffe? Daniel Radcliffe, right. Harry Potter. Oh, and this also is Bill a, oh, Paxton, this which is, is what, uh, this is the thing I raised a couple of weeks ago. I said that the BBC are doing a rock star drama um, uh, documentary. Yeah. So there you go. Oh. It's 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 going to be called Grand Theft Auto, I believe. I, I'm sure it was no, more than just in talks. I'm sure it was actually being done, but clearly it wasn't the case. Fair enough. Um, I'd watch that. I think BBC yeah. do some good stuff like that. Yeah, I'd probably uh, watch it, yeah. They'd probably do it quite well. Micro Men. Micro Men, yeah. That Micro Men. Um, game Mucation. Now, Department of Education believes video games are the future of learning with a picture of Minecraft. That's because Minecraft is now the ubiquitous learning product, isn't it? Well, Minecraft is just every video game, isn't it? This, well, is me, this is me getting annoyed again here, by the way. Right, so I'll read a little bit of the article to start off. Kids are playing more ga video games than ever these days, at least according to data from the US Department of Education. That might be the cause for some to worry about the intellectual future of the next generation, but Eric Martin disagrees. Oh, I'm not going to read it for a lot. So basically, it's saying that games are educational. Games they have are. been educational for a long time. Do you know what? I mean, I don't know. Obviously, I haven't learned everything from games, but so often, I, th this is just a tiny little thing, and th I'm not by any means saying that I've learned everything that I know from games by, by saying this, but when we watch um, game shows on telly, there's so many times that I get answers based on a game that I've played. Like Assassin's Creed, as much as I whinge about it, and as much as it's not actually 100% factually correct, there's a lot of history in that game. There's a lot of... Um, explaining like hist uh, certain histories and uh, certain parts of history anyway obviously it's dramatized but it's no worse than watching the tudors uh, you know on telly or, or uh, gladiator on uh, on film you know it's mm. it's it's similar kind of thing um but i've i've learned a lot just from playing games i've learned a lot of a lot of life skills as well strangely it's so you learned you learned that you can punch a tree a few times to get yeah. some wooden sticks and then you can punch some rocks let's to get... not let's not be facetious hey <laughs> let's let's <laughs> to look at the positives article, we're supposed to be actually, advocates of computer games here ubisoft um, will be attending the conference and presenting about games like assassin's creed which relies on a high degree of historical accuracy see like pressing x to jump over a building right, i'm gonna go and i'm gonna punch ubisoft <laughs> <coughs> in that every single uh, town or city back in you know olden times was exactly the same <laughs> How many how many Assassin's Creeds have you played? More than enough. 
Okay. I think, is it not all I, the same I think there is something in this. I think there's there, there's been a recent um, resurgence of games which have kind of a, a, a learning or a, an educational feel to them, like Kerbal Space Program. Batman. Mm. I'm, Batman. I'm sure it's Kerbal Space Program. Luke throws in Kerbal Space Program and Chris responds straight away with Batman. <laughs> Batman. A fictional character. <laughs> The Kerbal Space Program. I have. No, I'm under no illusion of the fact that that has probably inspired a, a generation of people to want to become rocket scientists. Very I, re- well. I really do think that's the case because I, I haven't played it myself, but I've watched it and Steve's played it. Um, the, Don't the, tell me it's like building an actual like. It's not, but it, it explains some very it's some yeah, very it's, fundamental it's, rocket yeah, science. The that fundamental basic parts of it. Yeah. Basic physics of what's happening during uh, like rocket. So rocket propulsion. But I I think I think game developers should be really aiming. I've I've said it a, l- a lot of times. I do like my escapism games, but I also like the fact that a lot of games are realistic and they have certain you know uh, certain factual things in them. I th- again, it depends. I think it's a. I like the mix, I suppose, and I I like the fact that that physics is getting better in games, and it is because it's going to be the more realistic it is, the more. Um, I suppose more educational it's going to be to to the younger gener- generation. Mm. Sorry, this may sound really weird, but I actually think that games like survival and explore- exploration games help you with orienteering skills. When we were playing Savage Lands, <laughs> Our and we kept getting lost the terrible. instant we, we yeah we kept getting lost all the time. It felt like that's what would happen if you're really in the middle of a forest somewhere. Right, there there it is. Would be- there are some people who are better at navigating than others, and I I agree with you here. I believe that playing games in general, whether it's Quake or whether it's a, a what what's it called a, a survival game where you're in a forest, mm. helps you. Yeah, definitely with your navigation. Because remember, we there are some people that run around Quake levels that didn't know the left from right and couldn't decipher one room from another another room. Not many people that played with us, but you know, generally yeah. people that jump into quick, they couldn't go. Oh, oh, is this the same room where I was in before? Have I went round in a circle? Uh, mm. I've, there's other things as well, like um, like muscle memory. Like, for example, um, playing a racing game. Yeah. <clears throat> now, there's been a couple of times in my very very early driving career, should we say, where maybe we went round round about a little bit too fast. The car started a skid. Now, almost instinctively, I turned into the skid. Which is yeah. some of that, you know, someone who'd never be on, who'd never been behind the wheel of a car wouldn't like, necessarily do. But I knew that from playing racing games. I'm so on, yeah, I'm so with that. I I really do genuinely believe that there's been times when I've done things in my car and I've been pretty ballsy with my sports car, for instance, and His. done some quite scary things. Um, and the backs come out, and I've known what to do because, yeah. like Steve said, instinctively you just know what to do in games, and so you know how to do it in real life. And I think people, you know, a lot of crashes happen, and and like going off the road because people don't know what to do in that situation because they haven't been trained for it. You you get you, you trained in a car to drive it correctly, and you're never in any dangerous situations apart from the emergency stop. So you don't know what to do. There is no instinctual thing or even memory of what you would do if the car started to slide. Whereas with a game, there is because you've you've done it so many times. I learned to drive by playing big rigs, and I enjoy going straight through mountains. <laughs> <laughs> I I learned to farm by playing Farming Simulator, and I enjoy going up vertical mountains with entire trucks of grain behind me without spilling a single bit. The point I think the point is is if you play good driving games good driving simulators yes you're going to get good at that if you play if you play terrible ones and get addicted to those you might quite easily make the wrong the wrong decision at the you know at the right at the wrong time yeah, but a lot of driving games tend to try and ape the physics of real driving yeah games. yeah i'm being facetious again sorry <laughs> it, it, no i agree and uh, to, to an extent you can't say that that's the only reason you you're decent at driving but yeah i I'm I've with been you. Driving a long time now, so that's got some idea with it. I, I'm going to say, and this is controversial, going back to what we were talking about earlier. I'm going to say that Grand Theft Auto taught me a lot about driving. Grand Theft Auto Three. Yeah, certainly not the uh, GTA One or no, uh, GTA, GTA One. One. No, no, I've I've managed not to drive over any um, Harry Krishna followers. Yeah, I meant specifically the car handling. It's very, yeah, it's not exactly micro machines, isn't it? Basically, yeah. Basically, yeah. <laughs> 
Right, so shall we close the show? Because it's going to be a bit of a short one today. We're doing yeah. a bit of rambling. So thank you very much for everybody who has watched and participated in the show today. We're sorry that it's a bit of a short one. With I'm, I'm feeling particularly ill. I'm getting worse by the second. He's going to cry. You don't want to see a man with a beard cry. No, you don't. It's um, disgusting. If you were interested in anything we do, you do usually have a little bit better banter than we have tonight um please follow subscribe rate whatever else you do on the internet these days uh, www.resonancearcade.com all of our social links are on there we're on twitter youtube facebook um google and your mum so we're doing a metal gear solid stream whenever lou whenever sam rather is back um and ready to to go I thought we, you were doing it on Monday. We were, well, he hasn't. He didn't get back to me, so we didn't do it this Monday. But we will get back on that at some point. Uh, we are always looking for guests as well. I believe Josie said that she'd like to come back in the chat today, so we will probably get Josie back on at some point. Um, but if you are interested and you've got opinions and you have a lot to say about uh, about games, game development, or gaming news, then please drop me a line. I'm sure at residencearcade.com, or you can just follow us on Twitter or drop me a message on their dm or, or whatever whatever the kids do these days um just bear in mind that we're all a grump of old grumpy grump grumps a grump of old Chris grumpy is. grump grumps i think i like that a grump we are a grump a of grump men of people yeah <laughs> a grump of men <laughs> um we upload all our, our all our episodes to youtube as well i may not get on it this week uh, as, as quickly as i normally do but thank you very much and uh, we'll <laughs> catch you all coming. <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's been in here for hours. Sorry, I'm ages ago. Um, so, yes, thank you very much, everybody, and we shall catch you next week. Bye-bye.